Once you get approved for your authorized.NET account, you're going to want to integrate that with Shopping Cart Elite. So this is how you do it. You go to authorized.NET website, you click on Merchant Login. Once you log in with your username and password, you'll need to go to Account, you'll go to Test Mode, and you'll turn off the test mode. In my case, I have it live right now, so you would also need to put it live. When you first log in to Authorize.NET, it will be on test mode. Once you made it live, you'll go to API Login ID and Transaction Key. You'll get a Login ID, and you'll obtain a Transaction Key, and then you'll go to Shopping Cart Elite Back Office, where it says Credit Card. You'll accept credit cards. You will put in your login ID and transaction key that you generated on the website. You can put your email address so you can get notifications. Make sure you're not on the test environment. You select which credit cards you will accept. Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. Click Save, and you're done, and you will be accepting credit cards. Keep in mind that you will need to set up these authorization settings as well as the fees according to tutorial 5.6. Just keep in mind that as a default, you are set up as authorized only on domestic orders. This means when somebody buys something on your website, the credit card will not charge automatically until you enter the tracking number for that order. If you want the credit card to automatically charge, you need to make sure that you have the charge turned on. But also keep in mind that if you charge everyone and then the orders get canceled and you need to refund them and you exceed a certain threshold of refunding versus how many orders you place, you may get your credit card account frozen. So make sure you consult with your merchant processor on how much refunds you're allowed to make every single month. Visa and MasterCard rules tell you that you have to authorize all transactions only and only charge them when you have a tracking number. But sometimes it is not possible for us to do that because of the cash flow in our business is not sufficient enough to prepay for orders and then get the money later. So you will have to decide on which one of these options you will want to do. As for the other settings, Tutorial 5.6 describes exactly what they do, so make sure you set them up properly before you start processing orders. The fees that you see here is mainly for accounting purposes so you know how much you were charged every month. The customer surcharge is if you want to recover the fees from what you have been charged. So if your fee is 2.5% and 30 cents per transaction and you want to recover that when you process an order, you just put 2.5 and 30 cents per transaction and next time there's an order processed, this amount will go towards the handling fee of the transaction.